Dr. Sasa Malavi, but everybody calls me Dr. Sass. And, and I'm going to change my talk a little bit, because the talk Jeremy gave was so excellent. I was blown away by this talk. I knew this guy had it in him when I met him. He just blew me away. So I'm going to start by telling you a little bit about myself and about the different companies we own and how I got into wool and Halo. Um, so I started off as an emergency room doctor. I'm an MD. I worked in an emergency room. And right away when they started talking to me about Halo, I thought, wouldn't it be great if all those patients that showed up in my emergency room, dead on arrival, without a pulse, and without not breathing, and the ambulance just driver just said, we found them in the sleep, here it is. Wouldn't it be beautiful if they had a device that would tell us what was the cardiac rhythm two, three hours, three, four days before they showed up in the ER? Did they have some kind of arrhythmia? Was the potassium high? How many more people could we save if they were wearing that device, if they showed up in my emergency room and they couldn't talk because they were unconscious, but I would take the device, I'd plug it into some kind of a monitor and get all this data, what we call big data these days. And I'm, I started out in emergency, emergency medicine, but I was fat, I was obese actually. And I started a journey, a journey in weight loss eventually became both certified in bariatric medicine, which is weight loss medicine, and also in anti-aging medicine. And, and my journey in medicine really took me into business and not the other way around. Uh, I started a company called Smart for Life, where we produce um, healthy products, products that are low in sugar, high in protein, high in fiber. And uh, we've been doing very well with that, with that line. And I really believed in delivering food and nutrition would be key to making people living healthier and better lives. I also started a company called Straight Medical Lab, which Jeremy used to work for. Jeremy was my employee. I think I'm going to be working for Jeremy going forward. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know what? Uh, I'll tell you a story about Jeremy. He did a conference in Louisiana. And I don't know how many of you are in medical sales, but it's one of the hardest things to sell because doctors are busy. Some of them are just pain in the butt. And, and, and Jeremy would never, ever give up. I would talk to doctors and I would say, this guy is never going to buy anything. And Jeremy would sell him. But this company was one of the companies Jeremy said no to because he saw something bigger and he moved on. And I was friends with Jeremy, Jeremy on Facebook. All of a sudden, I see him in Dubai. I see him here. I see him there. What is this guy doing? <laughs> and uh, Lydia came up to me, because I only talked to Lydia now. She's much better looking than I am. And she told me, you got to look at this device. And I said, no, I hate network marketing. Leave me alone. And then Ken and Tara came, and they literally shoved the device in my face and said, you got to use this. You got you to look into this. And I looked into it. And I, I knew Jeremy was already involved. And the fact that I saw what Jeremy was doing got me involved in it. And this device is revolutionary. I don't think any of you understand what's happening in the world right now. There is a revolution in the world happening right now. And I'll talk to you in a few minutes about it. And the revolution is that what's happening is that things are going to change very quickly in the next 10 to 15 years. We are going to have self-driving cars. 10% of, of men and women right now drive for a living. They will lose their jobs because self-driving cars are coming. Okay? The other thing that's going to happen is that when I'm in the nursing home, a robot is going to change my diapers. Okay? That's what's going to happen. I know some of you think it's crazy. That is what's going to happen. And in the next 10 to 15 years, the era of you sitting down with your doctor and giving him a long history, which gives a few data points, is going away. Everybody will have wearables. They will have huge data points that will be delivered to the doctor. The doctor will know your blood pressure, not just when you walked into the office, but for the last month, six months or a year, how you felt, how you ate, 
your blood glucose level. I don't think you guys realize how big that is. That is not just for diabetics. 50% of you in this room are insulin resistant. 50% of you in this room eat too much sugar. 50% of you in this room need to have your blood sugar monitored. You, you want to know, can you imagine when you're having a meal, and the end of that meal, you get an alarm, and your guardian gets alarm, and maybe your doctor gets an alarm, that your blood sugar went too high, even though you're not a diabetic, but you just picked out and had too much sugar? <laughs> Is that going to change your behavior? Yeah. Do you think you're going to wake up the next day and say, well, maybe I shouldn't eat that again? Yeah. Well, that's happening. And you're part of the technology that's going to do that. So you have to understand that this is just much bigger than diabetics. Yes, diabetics are going to benefit. But how many people are going to be prevented from getting diabetes? Because we will be able to tell them, guys, your lifestyle is wrong. You're too sensitive to sugar. And you will be able to know which foods work well for you and which foods don't, the quantities, this technology is going to make this possible. And it's actually much greater than this. Uh, because we are going to be using wearables for something else. Jeremy's daughter may live to 200 years. Now I'm an anti-aging doctor. And I can tell you that the anti-aging community, we are right now saying that it's very possible that this next generation will come into the generation where we can begin reversing the aging process. It's there. In fact, me, Ken and Tara, one of our confort doctor class, was one of the heads of the Anti-Aging Association, and he told us that he reversed his mother's age with new technology by 10 to 15 years in a one year period. And he had the biomarkers to do it. So you think this is not tied in to that, to that technology? This technology is tied into anti-aging because if I can know your blood sugar, if I can know your toxins, if I can know your hormones, and I can know what you're being exposed to, if I can know your mood, if I can know your free radicals, and there are already sensors out there that measure free radicals, that are going to be added to this technology as we go forward. We will be able to use nutrition, good med medicine, cancer prevention, lifestyle changes, and wearable technology to take this generation, my son's generation, and Jeremy's daughter generation, and don't be surprised if they will live till 200 years. It's coming, folks. All right? And I can tell you that when you go to anti-aging conferences, they don't talk about it like something far away in the future. They talk about it something that's happening in the next 10 to 15 years. Uh, cancer is being beaten. Uh, heart disease is being beaten. All those diseases are related to lifestyle. This device is the best lifestyle intervention tool I've ever seen, by far. This is it, and I'll tell you a few stories in a few minutes. So, you know, people are using wearables, you know, this is the typical things that you see. But really, it can be used for a lot more. And let me tell you why Halo is completely different from all the other devices. I got excited on the Halo device because of the Guardian and the SOS function. Because I bought a Fitbit when it came out, I wore it for three days and I stopped wearing it. I bought an Apple Watch when it came out. I wore it for a little while and then I stopped wearing it. I'm still wearing my Halo, this is the third week. And I hate wearing anything on my wrist. I don't wear a wedding band, I don't wear anything. I hate it. The reason is that it has that SOS function, it has the Guardian function. And I say, God forbid if something goes wrong and I have this with me. And I know the future. And I know that I myself suffer from um, blood pressure that goes up when I'm stressed out. And my blood pressure does go up when I'm stressed out and I've realized that I need to relax some more. And white coat syndrome, the thing that Jeremy talks about that he had when he went to his doctor, 
We have 25% of people who take blood pressure medication today don't really need to be on blood pressure medication. They have white coat syndrome. They have, now there is a machine, it's called a 24 hour blood pressure monitor. You can put it on a patient, Medicare pays you $200 to do the test. And I do it, I prescribe it sometimes. I have a patient who comes in, he's very nervous, he has high blood pressure, his EKG is normal, we do cardiac echo, it's normal. I send them out for a 24 hour blood pressure monitor. It's a machine that they wear, it's like a halter monitor, there's a little box, it takes the blood pressure every, every half hour or so, and then it gives you a report. And if the blood pressure is normal when they were away, then you can take them off the drugs. How many doctors do that test? <laughs> Very few, you know why? Yeah. They want to deal with the paperwork, the patients sometimes don't like having the machine on for 24 hours. This is easy. This is the best 24 hour blood pressure monitor that I've ever seen. And Medicare does not have to pay $200 every shot for it. Yeah. So, so this is revolutionary. One of the biggest things that's gonna happen right now is electronic medical records and wearable technology are gonna to come together. I bet you that in the next year or two, this company is gonna link up to an electronic medical record. So when you come to the office or you can download it at home, your doctor can get a lot of data about you right in your medical chart. And let me tell you why big data is so important. And, and I want to explain big data to you because I don't think people understand what big data is. There's two types of big data. Big data for an individual. So when you go to a doctor, he measures your blood pressure, has an EKG, maybe does 50 different blood tests on you, right? And maybe a few other parameters. So there are 70 data points. Your hemoglobin, your cholesterol, just you get out of the 70 data points. Do you know how many data points are really in your body? Do you know how many different measurements we have to do in order to find out the health of an, of an individual? Somewhere in the range of 1,000 to 10,000. No doctor brain can process all that information ever. This is gonna to have to go to artificial intelligence and the data points that are coming are gonna to have to come from a wearable device. And don't be surprised if these devices get a lot more sophisticated with something maybe embedded in the skin that transmits out that measures much more sophisticated measurements. Those data points have to be delivered to the doctor so that the doctor understands all this information and gets a very simple summary based on these thousands of data points. So that's one type of big data, big data from an individual. Then there's big data from a big community. Imagine a city all of a sudden has a flu epidemic. Well, if we are collecting data that is HIPAA compliant, meaning we're not collecting the patient's name and, and information, we find out that all of a sudden 15% of the population has developed a fever. Well, that's an alarm. We will know that a flu epidemic is beginning before it ever begins. This also can, uh, can help us in other diseases where you have a whole bunch of people who can give you early signals on something happening in the population. A certain poison, a certain toxin, anxiety, if there's some issues in the population as well. So we know that these devices are here to stay, period. All right, if you think this is a fad, it's not. If you think this is in the early, early infancy of what's happening in the medical devices, the problem is that I'm a doctor and doctors have not woken up to these devices. They still don't understand what they do. You sitting in the room obviously have. So you're ahead of the game and you really are pioneers. This device that you are wearing right now and talking about should really be on everybody's list in this country in the next five years. Because those data points are so important. And you will make it happen. There's also a perfect marriage between this device for weight loss. This device can tell us about, you know, a lot of my patients come to me and they tell me, 
I eat because I'm angry, I eat because I'm depressed, I eat because I'm bored, I eat because I'm stressed. Wouldn't it be nice if I could know if what the patient is telling me is true? That would differentiate between the patient who tells me that and the patient who, who doesn't tell me that. Wouldn't it be nice if I can tell the patient, hey, you visited McDonald's twice in the last week. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to happen. Because this device was geographic, apps are going to be created. This is why the app store that this company has created is revolutionary. Because an app will be created that will tell you when did the patient eat, where did they go, and the doctor can put warning areas. You know, McDonald's, don't go there. You're gonna, I'm going to get an SOS. I'm going to get a guardian. It's going to happen. I remember five years ago, uh, I had a friend who started a diet, and uh, all of a sudden I get a phone call, like at 10 o'clock at night. He was living in New York City. I was living, in, I still live in Florida. And he says, I'm outside of a pizza place. Talk me out of it. <laughs> and I go, what? He goes, I'm outside this pizza. I'm going to have a pizza. Talk me out of it. I said, don't go. Just leave. Go for a walk. Go have a protein bar. And he did. I would love to be able to do that automatically, electronically. People want that. People want to be talked out of it. People want to be talked out of eating bad. These devices will be able to do that. <clears throat> the other thing that you have to understand is that patients want to take back their health. Patients, and the reason patients want to take back their health is because medicine has gotten so sophisticated and medicine has become so uh, patient driven meaning that we know that if you don't smoke, if you don't drink too much alcohol, if you eat correctly, if you exercise, if you keep your weight down, we know that those are the things that really lead to longevity. These are all things that only the patient can do. You can come to my office every day. If you don't do those things, you're not gonna have a healthy life. But patients get busy, right? We all have a busy life. We all of a sudden are looking up, it's four o'clock already. But a device that can give us feedback, that gives us data, we know. Medical studies have already shown that feedback devices make a big difference in patients' life. And feed, feedback devices work. This is a feedback device, okay? It can give you feedback every minute, it can give you feedback every hour. You can look at it at the end of the day. I look at my screen about three 